We're dedicating today's Express to Port Moody's most passionate people. On today's show, Casa Fabeso's Chef Roberto. Uh, <laughs> Please review the list of complicits. Shift Arts One Act Theater Festival. La, 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 la. Sinister skin tattoos and body piercing. The artists of Sinister Skin Tattoo. Today I freehanded uh, the background in behind. The bakers of Cake Ya. Yeah. We use fresh cream in our cakes, not so much buttercream. I love Port Moody. I think Port Moody is a great city. See that and more. Local expression. Welcome to The Express, I'm Jo Hanavord, and this is our Port Moody special. Today we're going to show you some of this city's top spots that are also some of this city's best kept secrets, like right here at Casa Fabeso. But up first on our Cultus Lake Big Summer feature, we're sharing a big piece of Port Moody's history, one that dates back 125 years. Big Summer is brought to you by Cultus Lake Water Park, BC's number one water park. So the 1890s were pretty quiet around here, but by the turn of the century... For Isabel, a visit to the Port Moody Station Museum brings back memories. That's so when my dad started to work at the CPR. He came out from Winnipeg. Isabel and her friends from the Poppy Residences in Burnaby are here for a trip back in time to when Port Moody was the end of the line, the train line. I think trains is something that almost everybody can relate to and especially most seniors I encounter regardless if they're from Canada or from anywhere in the world have some story of riding a train or a relative who has worked for a rail company or something like that so it brings back lots of memories for people. When they looked at the geography of Port Moody surrounded by mountains. So our group today is a seniors group and so we do a brief tour through the museum uh, telling them a little bit about Port Moody's history and, uh, and what happened in the station and then they do a tea and tour on our rail car. So we have a, a 1920 sleeper car that has been converted into a, a dining car that we can serve tea on. And Isabel, what does being in a train car like this bring back for you? Old memories of my childhood. Yeah? Absolutely. I came out here when I was a child we, with my dad and my brothers. That used to be a real special Sunday trip. This year is particularly special for the Port Moody Station Museum because it's the 125th anniversary of the first passenger train from Montreal arriving in Port Moody. Well, the CPR initially identified Port Moody as the western terminus and then a few years later decided to extend the line into Vancouver. So today, Vancouver is known as the western terminus. But that doesn't take any shimmer off the museum. The museum's in a station, a CPR rail station, from built in 1908. Uh, and so we have some rooms that are recreated around the 1920s era to depict life in the station. And then we also have displays about Port Moody's history. But there are certain stories you just can't learn from objects in a museum. Jim used to work for the railway. I was born in Revelstoke back in 1916. People got from one town to another by walking the tracks. But you had to be awfully careful because the toilets on the, on the train emptied onto the tracks and you'd land in the middle of something one day and you had to watch your step very carefully. What do you think of the whole museum in general? Oh, I think it's wonderful. It brings back all your memories and it gives them a chance to display some of the things that we had. I think it's a great place to learn about uh, local heritage and history of Port Moody, but also the context of this community in BC's history, um, and to really appreciate how rail travel was important in, uh, in Canadian history. I'm Erin Shaw in Port Moody for The Express. Big Summer is brought to you by Cultus Lake Water Park, BC's number one water park. The Port Moody Station Museum is currently decorated in a 20s theme, but they have so much stuff in storage, they're thinking of upgrading to display their collection from the 30s and the 40s. Now we're fast forwarding you right back to 2011 for our next Port Moody feature. Right here at Reed Point Marina, you'll find the Italian restaurant Casa Fabesso. You'll also find a chef with as much flavor as his food. 
He's got all the tricks of the trade. There's all new basil which is growing because we make the own pesto. He's got all the tools of the trade. He's got his eye on the bigger picture. I don't want to waste anything. Every single leaf is important. While his hands craft new dishes daily. At Casa Fabesso, they don't even have a menu. This is what we do. We just strictly do menu tastings. We're small little restaurants, so it keeps everything fresh. Anna and her husband, Chef Roberto, opened the Restaurante Italiano at Reed Point Marina about two years ago. It was basically by fluke, I guess. It, I think we were at the right spot at the right time, and we were looking for something just small enough to handle in two people. And this was it, and plus it's so beautiful here. OK, here we are. I'm going to show you my garden. Chef also has room for a greenhouse herb garden in the back. We can still use the rosemary, uh, sometimes even sage, even the winter time. And did you learn how to do all this? Because you grew up working on a vineyard, working yeah, on a farm yeah, 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 in yeah. Italy. Yes. Do you have a vineyard out here too, then? <laughs> Not, Not yet. yet. Yeah. <laughs> we try to stay with local ingredients as well, herbs from the chef's garden. And we, we just keep it changing so it's never boring. The other main ingredient in all of Chef Roberto's dishes? And passion. A lot of passion. Un abbraccio. Vi amo tutti. Ciao, ciao. Chef's going to make us a dessert a little bit later. And so you know, Casa Fabesso is a great place to host a private party. And they can host up to almost 30 people. Now, up next, it's not dinner theater, but we are going from dinner to theater to look at one of the thought-provoking pieces in this year's one-act theater festival. Please review the list of complicits and their crimes for the afternoon session. This is an observation session where the government examines the conduct of five teenagers and those who do not comply are severely punished. Everything's treated the exact same way. Um, like it's brought up in the show, shoplifting versus knifing somebody, all ends in the same thing of being killed. <laughs> it's called Look Me in the Eye, a play set inside a futuristic police state similar to Oceana in George Orwell's 1984. Here, everyone is controlled by fear. If the system works, then what am I so afraid of? Sarah Luba plays Ray a compliant citizen who eventually witnesses her brother's violent execution. My brother, my brother, my protector, my friend. There's a lot of anger, there's a lot of intense just grief, and the fact that I now have no system to hold on to, I'm facing an identity crisis. I don't know really who I am because everything I believed in has been basically taken away with my brother. Another theme the play explores is the elimination of personal privacy. You will stand to the window immediately, now. It's something these youth can relate to. It's scary how reliant people are on the internet and especially Facebook or Google. You know, you definitely, you could, you could stalk someone for sure. You, I, you know, people lurk other people all the time, you know, it's, it's scary. The goal is to get young people to question the world around them because the actors say police states do exist and freedom should never be taken for granted. If I'm not one of those people living in one of those places, I will never truly know what it feels like. This play gives me a taste and only a taste of it. Enough to recognize how lucky we truly are. I'm Tim Chung in Port Moody for The Express. You can go to shiftarts.ca to find out about upcoming events. And if you're as passionate about live performance art as they are, they're also looking for a co-artistic director and a designer in residence. You're watching our Express Port Moody special, and we're talking culture and subculture up next. After the break... We're going to make a nice dessert. Chef Roberto's Venetian dessert. The artwork of Sinister Skin Tattoo. That was the first version. You're watching local TV on the Express. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... The Express is brought to you in part by Plum, fashion supplier to host Johanna Ward. 